so what I want to do is I'm going to talk to the teachers there. And basically, the, the, what I'm going to do in this presentation is hopefully just give you a kind of list of things that about my blind learning and kind of my journey that I've been going through, as well as some of the good practice that happens in our school. And there's very much school life lessons and a lot of laughter and some tears as well. <laughs> um, so I'll start off with my language learning. Um, my language learning was quite interesting going to school, and I took credit in Spanish in high school. However, for the whole entire time um, while I was at secondary school, it looked a bit like this. And there was confusion everywhere. Um, and for me, at the time, I was told to put off language learning at the time. And for me to go through this entire journey and come out the other end, it's quite something personally for me. It's quite a, a, a positive journey that I've been through. And then I started teaching, and even through my university, um, degree language, you know, language learning wasn't something that was highlighted as being so so important. There were people having any real issues, and there being have a bit. I then came to realise that it is absolutely fundamental, and it's part of the fundamental experience that we should have given our children. As well. And then I joined One Hill Primary School. Now you'll have noticed that at below One Hill Primary School, there was this. <laughs> and as soon as I walked, because um, I hadn't ever been to school before, and as soon as I walked through the door, it was the school that I actually did my probation in. And I seen that sign, my face kind of did this. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely terrifying for me, because the minute I looked at it, I thought, I know it's not French, I know it's not Spanish. <laughs> And in actual fact, it was Gaelic. And that was the beginning of my journey. Um, so although, yes, for here and you know, we're talking about French, we're talking Spanish, but for me, my journey actually began with Gaelic. And in my school, we have a Gaelic medium education department, and we have two Gaelic classes plus a Gaelic nursery. And that was my first ever experience with Gaelic medium education. And the way the Gaelic medium education works in my school is that it's through immersion. And that was the first time I'd ever actually witnessed immersion happening in real life in the classroom. And I have to say that I was totally blown away by it. When I walked into one of the um, Gaelic classes within the first few weeks of going round, every single child was being taught through the medium of Gaelic. They were even being taught French through the medium of Gaelic and English through the medium of Gaelic. And for me, I was totally taken aback with these young children who essentially, they were bilingual. They could speak English, they could speak Gaelic, and here was me walking into a school and couldn't could only speak English. And for me, it was quite a humbling thing, and I thought, I really need to do something about it. And that's really where my journey started. And it all started as well, because at Wing Hill, there is an extremely, and I don't like that if I is, but Jan can be for you, <laughs> um, th there is an extremely passionate and highly trained team. We have got a school where our staff absolutely language learning and teaching. And you, as soon as you walk into the school, you can see it, you can feel it. It's totally embedded within the ethos of our school. And that's where my inspiration came from to get that journey started. So that's a wee bit basically about me. And this is one of my favourite quotes, it's by Socrates. Education is the kindling of a flame, not the killing of a vessel. And that is precisely what happened as soon as I walked into that school. They kindled a flame in me to start learning about language teaching. So, the very first um, part of my journey was to go on the LSEE French course in Lyon, and I have to say that I was <coughs> positively terrified to go there. Um, however, Jan was extremely good at encouraging us all to, you know, the staff to attend, and it wasn't just my school that went to the authorities, there was our guide training school, where Jane um, was actually on the same course as me, and there was another school, New Art. When I was on the course, those were the three kinds of things that I had picked out on it. It was about the culture, it was learning about the culture, the pedagogy and the linguistic. And those for me were three big key areas of my own professional development, three very big key areas. And I had the pleasure of going with these lovely members of staff. <laughs> and these are the most motivated, enthusiastic members of staff you will ever see in a school, and I think Jan will have to agree. And there we have our primary one puppet, Pierre. <laughs> and Pierre was brought along for the journey so that Pierre could go back and teach primary one everything about the learning that we could do with science. And during the course, um, I learned loads, particularly when it comes to the pedagogy 
or suggest one that is in the primary school. But as well, it was about the confidence that attained and the enthusiasm and Jan was there. There was a total enthusiasm um, amongst everyone who was there. We were all very, very committed and we were all enthused to go back and teach languages. However, when I walk back in, um, following, following August, one of the things that my head teacher asked me, and she loved this question, and it's what's the point? What was the point of going on this course? What was the point of you going away and spending a week during your summer holidays? Um, learning about this, and that really for me kind of sparked the next stage in my journey where I thought, well, what is the point in this? How am I going to actually use my learning of cultural pedagogy and linguistics in the classroom? And how is it going to impact on the children? And for the whole entire year of that last year, it was absolutely about the impact that, the, um, that this course had on the children that I agreed on. And that's what I'm going to really talk about. There are a lot of things that we speak about that we started to implement in my school is good practice. But the one thing that the biggest impact that it's had on the children in my school, and again I'm also going to thank the Jan who's been in meetings, she's witnessed this, there is an enthusiasm for language learning in my school. If you walk down a corridor, you cannot walk down a corridor in my school without a child speaking to you in either French, Spanish or Belgian. And it could be something as simple as don't be you or that bonjour. No, thank you for holding our phone now, half a length in Gaelic. But there's an absolute enthusiasm and it's lovely for the children to see that in the children. There's also a passion for staff, and that passion that staff have has it's been translated to this. They can see that, they can see that the staff in front of them who are motivated about language learning and teaching. Therefore, they are being passionate about it as well. The next stage for me was the PL platform, and the PL platform is an absolute godsend. I have to say, the resources that are on it are so high quality and they're excellent that it'd be easy enough just to pick up and run with it and go. And one of the good things about the PL platform is when you've got a member of staff who isn't fluent in delivering languages, which I hope that was me, um, the PL platform's great because it gives staff, it kind of builds um, capacity within staff either to use the language in the room and use the, the language with their children because they're so well supported with the planning, the resources, the sound files, everything that's on there and also the response to everyone on it as well. The biggest impact is responding to children's needs and interests as well. That's so, so important. What I learned was that through my own experience, I was not interested in sitting in a classroom learning their tables and French constantly. What my kids are loving right now is the fact that we are we were learning about Europe as an interdisciplinary topic. However, we actually didn't do any form of French. So you were able to follow their interests, the work they were wanting to learn about Europe, and then you were able to tie the French in and that essentially is how French should be going. It should be that um, interdisciplinary approach that should be used and it's equal the impact is on our children. As well as that, one of the things that I started to implement in my own class and I haven't found a term yet for Spanish yet, but I don't get there. It's <laughs> um, French Friday. And because we've got the Gallic Media Education Department and they, you know, it's total immersion in Gallic there, I thought, how can that translate into the classroom? How can I start to immerse my children in language learning? So one of the things that I tried was French Friday, whereby I speak to them as much as I can. In French the whole entire day. I give them instructions in French, I tell them what to do in French. Um, I, in terms of when asking to get into groups, when asking to give out jobs, just open things, play a game, everything is, is through French. Register in the morning, greeting them at lunchtime, and all of a sudden what had happened was initially the children were very, they were a little less confident in responding to me, but because they were seeing me modelling that use of language constantly day in, every week to Friday, day in and day out, all of a sudden that kind of confidence like you just sold up and they didn't mind coming up and speaking to me in French and came up to say, Rodrigo de Alcastro, Monsieur Rogers, and it was absolutely fantastic. And that French Friday was translated as other teachers are now picking up French Friday. And it's basically so that we can start to really embed that language into the daily teaching and learning practices in our school. And again, I've just spoken about that, the fact that the confidence is there, that we speak in French daily and the children have the ownership of it as well. They're able to confidently take the language and use it in daily conversations, not just between staff and children, but also with each other. What we also decided was that because we were close to everyone, we aiming for one for two languages, and we wanted to really, because we have the Gaelic department, we thought that there needed to be some Gaelic input 
Florida uh, um, things that the school decided to do last year was give a primary five to seven children half an hour of early kids and week. And that, the reason the decision was made to do that is because we're really starting to think now actually about age three. And part of the invite, the advice and guidance from Education Scotland was that everything can be delivered by a specialist coming in and it's about, it's not so much about um, you know, consistently using the same language, it's about just giving that LP, just giving that short, sharp introduction of a second language, and that's our last year as well. Interdisciplinary learning, again, we've seen the impact of it, it's so, so important to get um, teachers planning interdisciplinary learning and thinking about how can we include French in this, how can they get the French in, and that's where the PL platform comes in really, really handy. And within our interdisciplinary learning, one of the um, big successful projects we did was a French party, um, where all the classes had taken part, and we all had an aspect of the French party to organise and manage, and the children absolutely loved it. As well as that, I'm sure all other schools do the exact same thing about doing French week and having real focus weeks on languages as well. Um, has been very beneficial, but the project that I really want to speak about actually, um, it's very hard to put it in there. Um, this here, it's our Gaelic comic. We had a curriculum come out called Magic Pop, and as you know, these days, like a super hero like these extensions that are out there, particularly just loving the fact that it's all social media, there's comics and media and media, and you thought, well, why not marry the two together? And the first comic that we decided to do was a Gaelic comic. And the children have written this comic and it's been produced um, beautifully. And it's, it was in connection with the Magic Pop as well. And there was so much success with this. And I've actually got copies so you can take some copies of your feet as well to have a wee look at. There was so much success with that that we decided to go and do a French comic. Now the French comic um, was completed by the time the seven. Um, two primary and seven classes. It was completed by the primary and seven students last year. I have to say that for those of you who are reading the title of the project and looking at the graphics within it, the primary and sevens are quite tasty. <laughs> and they were quite in there a wee bit. Um, so the story is about a, a wizard princess from outer space. And it's, it's all very interesting. It makes a good read. Um, and I have to say, the impact of this was absolutely phenomenal. The children were totally enthusiastic, they were totally engaged in what they were doing. And, oh, sorry, they were totally enthusiastic, totally engaged in what they were doing. And this actually sparked something that was quite interesting for us because during the project, they were motivated to try and use as kind of obscure and as difficult language as possible because poor Jan um, was the point of contact for it and I've been asked to translate all manner of it. Exploding marshmallow. An exploding marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and I have to say that the one kind of thing that I, you know, it constantly kind of crops up in my head was if we didn't have children who were confident and passionate about languages, they would not have been asking for these kind of things. So it was a total success, this project, and the children were absolutely, they were so proud of themselves for being able to produce um, this comic. They also produced their own individual comics in French, and if you manage to grab one of these on the way out, there is a website, magicbotscomics.co.uk, and all of my primary seven comics are on there already, and they're in French as well. So you can use that, take that back to the authorities and show them it to see if anyone would like to have a go and try it. I have to say it's so beneficial. And the other thing that came from that was as the children were going through the comic and asking for those um, you know, wonderful bits of vocabulary that Jan was filling her head in mm -hmm. um, with, they decided, and this was of their own volition, this was not um, anything to do with me or the other primary seven teacher. They decided they wanted to make their own um, picture dictionary because they realised that there was loads and loads of phrases they were using, but they wanted to remember them. So the children took responsibility for this and we handed over the laminated pouches, the paper, everything, and they have created whatever they um, use, certain vocabulary and you know, phrases, they decided to make a picture page for it with the vocab. 
And this has been invaluable in the classroom because one of the things that has come from this is that we now have children who are using the picture of their peers to build sentences. And that has been the biggest, one of the biggest challenges because I think that absolutely we can get children to learn more bits of vocabulary, but I think the important shift for our school in particular is getting children writing and speaking in sentences. And that's a really important part of that. But I'll leave this as well for you to look at. And again, this was total responsibility of other children to the point where they were using scrap paper. They've actually done a bit on that piece of scrap paper. And it's totally their work. Um, and other classes are now starting to create their own picture books. So every class eventually will have one that a child can go and pick up with a note and say, you know, how do you say this? Click through and see if there is a page for it. And take that information, take that learning from. And it's also a good way to showcase their learning as well. And for us last year, we lit the flame. I had lit the flame myself. The school had lit the flame me. We were now lighting the flame for the children. And that was the biggest impact I think that we had. To the point where we then had to think about where we were going next. <laughs> and I managed, managed to get um, some more funding to attend the LNP course in Malaga. <laughs> Primarily for two reasons. The first reason was we had to think about school improvement, and that was on in any sponsor school languages, was on a school improvement plan. And also, we wanted to enhance the practice that was already going on in the school. And I have to say that it was absolutely one of the best courses to go to, and it was fundamental because I like us to do this, and that's another quote that I like um, about language learning the fact that we were ready to start opening the door, not just to French, but to others in Gaelic, but we wanted to open the door to as many languages as possible to our children. And this is a, from that course where um, we are now starting to think about what is coming next, and it is quite exciting times ahead, but one thing I have to say, and I'm really looking forward to the next up, up and coming year, we are going to be focusing on parent involvement and how we can start to include parents in the 142 languages that we are Promoting. We're also looking forward to looking more closely at the PL platform and using the responsive resources section of the platform. And class teachers are being encouraged to actually email to get responsive resources made so that eventually we have a bank of responsive resources that any teacher can pick up within the school and use. We're also going to start with the second level Spanish. I'm going to be delivering, um, uh, I'm going to try and deliver Spanish to our class this year. Um, we're actually going to do um, Spain as a context for learning. Um, so that class will be getting delivery in Gaelic, French and in Spanish this term. We're also going to be focusing on piece of the transitions because part of um, the transition programme for our children was that they were going to um, for a few day visits and things and coming back and realising that they had no Spanish, we were doing French and Gaelic and all the other high schools, all the other primary schools were having Spanish input. So we think it's important that we start to think about introducing Spanish part of the transition. <coughs> we're also going to be moving Gaelic into the primary four. And we also have a Spanish after school club, which I'm happy to get that. So those are just some of the plans. And we're currently going to an audit at the minute to see where else we want to go with it. But I think the point I'm trying to make is that when you're speaking to teachers, it's sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming when you're in a classroom. And you're thinking about one first school languages. But the, the key message that I would give is that it's one step at a time. It's one thing at a time. And if you can do one wee thing and you build on it and build on it and build on it, all of a sudden you've went from someone who had that confused face on, who was in total shock that they were in a school that delivered Gallic Game Education in total panic, to someone who has been through a journey similar to me, whereby I've built on my learning, built on my experience, and now it's just 